Well, uh, one of the nicest things of working with software development is that you have the opportunity to actually work with many different types of very interesting jobs. You can do um, game development, you can do web design, you can do embedded system, robotics, and one of them is SCADA systems. Uh, quite often people come to me and they ask me, after all, what is SCADA? Hello everybody, I'm Andy Dimera for TechHunters.com and today I'd like to talk to you about Supervisory Control and Data Acquisition Systems or SCADA Systems for short. Okay, every time that I talk about SCADA, a few words come into mind. Uh, safety, is one of them, uh, alarms and uh, protocols, communication, because when you're, when you're putting together a SCADA system, actually you're combining a number of things. And in order to do this, uh, you have many different SCADA packages out there. And uh, some of them are very famous, such as Wonderware, WinCC, uh, Iconix, um, maybe Factory Studio for Tatasoft. Those are just some of them. Uh, iFix, uh, Cinematic, Alstom, uh, you have a number of them. But uh, if you are a programmer and you're familiar with C Sharp, C, C, you know that uh, you, you can build this system itself uh, from the ground up. You don't really need a SCADA package. Uh, I would argue a little bit about that because the SCADA packages are there to actually make your life easier. And some of them, like the advantage of using them is that they provide you with tools that are going to make your development a lot more reliable and faster. And they they have been tested over the years. They, they, they like m many different companies, use them as well. So when you go to a certain company, it's most likely that you're going to actually face one of those systems, for instance, depending on the type of industry you're, you're working with. You may bump into an oil and gas industry, then probably you're going to find an Oasis system there. If you are working in an automotive environment, you probably are going to use, uh, you probably are going to find some something from Alan Bradley there. Uh, if you are in the transportation sector, you may find something from Alstom or something from Iconix or Tata Soft or so on and on. In the space industry, uh, you, you'll find different systems as well. Wonderware, maybe other systems. So there are many different packages out there, but they all work very close, um, very like the concepts almost the same. So you would be able to uh, jump from one package to another, uh, just adjusting to a few differences. But when you're developing a SCADA system, everything begins with the uh, client requirements. So that's when you start building layer upon layer of your system and taking care of the needs that your client has. So uh, how actually a SCADA system works then? Let's, let's pick up an, uh, an example of a train station, for instance, for the transportation industry. What do you exactly need for a system uh, of SCADA be implemented in, in, in a workstation? So basically when you talk about a transportation system, you have uh, what they call operational control center. It's a building where they have uh, many different computers. Uh, usually they um, have a professional sitting in front of those computers with different screens. And there, each one of those professionals, they are usually called uh, uh, control center operators. And uh, they're monitoring the system, different parts of the system. Some of them may be monitoring uh, the electrical system. Some of them may be monitoring the train system. Some of them may be monitoring the passenger flow system. A passenger flow system is, is uh, a system that's related to uh, basically everything to do with the passenger in the station, for instance. For instance, uh, the public announcements or the public information system, which is the billboard and the letters that you see on the B in the billboard, the sounding system. So, uh, not only that, so SCADA actually uh, receives signals from uh, computers that actually are interfacing with each 
part of the system as a whole and it collects those signals into different databases, distributes them into different databases and then treats those signals accordingly to what they need to see on the screen. So the operator is going to look at the screen and see for instance that a breaker on the electrical system didn't close when it was supposed to. So an alarm should be showing up on the screen and that the operator of the screen should be able to send a command to close that breaker or in the worst case scenario maybe call the maintenance department and send somebody down to the powerhouse to verify what's wrong. The same, uh, the same thing happens in the train. Uh, in the train there is a central unit that controls all the signals uh, for the train and if something goes wrong with the train uh, an alarm has to be raised on the uh, conductor console in this alarm, the same alarm has to be sent via, uh, well, usually via wireless to the control center, where the uh, control center operator will see that that particular train has a problem. And then he may need to take the uh, safety actions needed to avoid a major disaster or to help uh, in whatever manner that he needs to help. The SCADA system is divided into many components. Um, Basically, uh, they, uh, basically, they are distributed in databases and you have uh, these databases treating different signals in different forms. For instance, uh, you may have, um, let's say, a language translation uh, database in there. So when you click a button on the screen, you translate from English to French or from English to Spanish or any other language you may be working with. Uh, and this is part of the development as well. In order to work with all those signals coming from different sources, uh, SCADA needs to have protocols in place. And uh, one of the um, most used protocols out there for SCADA is called OPC, which stands for OLE for Process Control or Object Link and Embedded for Process Control. It's a, a, a standard that is going to combine different drivers into uh, one common language that every uh, SCADA package can understand and work with. And the reason OPC is there is uh, if you go back to the 80s, um, many people are developing different things in terms of SCADA as well. And uh, when you develop a SCADA, you need a driver, right, which is a piece of software that's gonna connect uh, the system to a, a, a computer system that's sending you the signal take that signal and translate that signal in something that your system can understand and work with. The problem is because there were so many different um, systems, so many different POCs for instance, each one of them would be using their own driver and therefore when you buy uh, a POC or a, a computer system from a different vendor, not always they would communicate with the SCADA system and that this was a problem because we were going to actually spend time and effort and lots of money to actually make up a driver for that particular system we just bought. So seeing that this problem was becoming too large at the time, uh, a lot of companies got together and then they came up with this OPC idea which is basically a, a standard, a protocol that combines all these drivers into one thing that every SCADA system understands. So nowadays, like uh, most SCADA system use that, not necessarily you need to use that, but it's a good idea if you do. So in a nutshell, a SCADA system basically works with um, a collection of signals that come from different sources, treat those signals in ways that the system can understand the system that you're developing and show on the screen the information that some um, monitoring system needs to show. If you are a control center operator, you're going to be basically monitoring alarms, sending commands, um, verifying uh, how the system is working and uh, taking actions when they are needed based upon what you see in your system. So in a nutshell, that's what SCADA is. Uh, it's a very interesting, very complex system that puts together many different aspects of the technical world. And uh, it's a nice field to work with. And if you have the chance, I would extremely advise you to actually get on board with that because you're going to learn a lot. Well, that's it for now. I hope you like this video and I'll see you next time.